Hi guys. So in the previous lecture we talked about Ito's integral for uh, simple processes. Today I would like to extend that discussion to cover Ito's integral for general integrands. <clears throat> so let's assume that we have a probability space and the probability space is given by capital omega which is a sample space, a sigma algebra and a probability measure. We are also equipped for the filtration given by f of t. And if you remember, this filtration is used to model information into our models. Let's assume that we conduct an experiment and we get an outcome omega. Okay. And depending on the outcome omega, we'll get some path of a Brownian motion. Okay. Or in other words, Brownian motion is dependent on this omega. We will also get another adapted stochastic process given by delta of t, which also depends on the outcome. Okay, so we'll get a part of this uh, adapted stochastic process. So both of these, um, both of these parts are dependent on the omega that we get, okay, or the outcome of the experiment that we get. And if you were to conduct the experiment again, we would get a different omega. And hence, you would get different path of our Brownian motion and different path of our adapted stochastic process. So we already know what our adapted stochastic process is. It basically is Ft measurable. And that means that the, 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 this can depend on the information available to us at time, till time t, but it cannot depend on any information beyond time t. Okay? So this basically is the setup and what we want to do is we want to calculate or we want to make sense of Ito's integral which is denoted by integral 0 to t delta of t dw of t. Okay. Now if you remember in the previous lecture we talked about Ito's integral and there I told you that Ito's integral itself is basically a stochastic process. Okay. Because this also uh, depends on the omega. So each of the integral is basically integral of this with respect to this and both of these processes or both of these paths depend on what omega we toss. So indirectly e is integral also depends on the omega and it's a stochastic process. Okay, something to keep in mind. In the previous lecture we've already talked about how to um, compute e integral for simple processes and at that time a simple process was a process which basically was held constant between times tj tj plus one so some interval tj and tj plus one we basically held the process constant okay and that was a simple process and we basically figured out how to compute eto's integral for that in that previous lecture today we want to talk about eto's integral for a general integrand and this integrand doesn't have to be a simple process. It basically is going to be a continuous process and it can even have jumps. So for example, I can try to draw one process here. Let's assume this is the time axis and this is value of delta t. Let's assume the process starts some initial value here and then go something like that. And then at some point basically jumps and maybe it goes down like that, okay? So this is one of the parts of this process and it depends, as I said, on omega. If you were to toss a different omega, the path of the process would change, right? And we wish to compute the Ito's integral of this kind of a process. And the way we're gonna do it is, we first, let's assume that this is where time capital T is. We'll first divide the time into n number of different time steps, okay? So let's assume that we have t0 less than t1, less than t2, less than t3, all the way to less than tn. <coughs> tn is going to be equal to t, t0 is going to be equal to zero. So graphically, this is t0 is equal to zero. Then we have t1 here, we have t2 here, we have t3 here, and so on. Okay, and <clears throat> so we have divided the time into n number of time steps. Now what we want to do is we want to come up with a approximation for this continuous process. 
okay and how we're going to approximate this continuous processes we're going to use a simple process okay simple process if you remember let's denote the simple process as delta n of t this basically is a simple process okay and simple process we basically mean that between any time step tj and tj plus one this process will be constant okay and what we'll do is we'll set the value of this process during any time interval equal to the value of the process that we're trying to approximate. Okay, so between say t0 and t t1, we'll set the value of this process equal to the beginning value of this process and then hold it constant. Okay, so between t1 and t2, the beginning and the value of the process at t1 is this and we'll hold it constant here it will be this we'll hold it constant we'll this is this we'll hold it constant okay so basically it's a simple process because between any time interval tj tj plus one uh the value is constant and we are basically equating at any point in time tj okay between the interval tj tj plus one basically is going to be equal to delta of tj 